the sweet potato patch has not been looking very good as of late it's all overrun with weeds and the leaves aren't as profusive as i generally like them to be so i'm just going to be pulling everything out seeing what went wrong and moving forward with a healthier crop when i replant these bags Hello everyone, thank you all so much for joining in. This is the Lovely Trinity Gardener channel and I have mixed feelings about this video. I'm happy to bring a video to you all, but also I'm happy that my sweet potatoes have not been looking very well in this corner of the garden. Now, before I get digging into these sweet potatoes, I have to tell you that it's important to have safety in the garden. So I have my gloves, I have another one for this side, and I have my tall boots because I just don't know what's going to be underneath all of these weeds and in the dirt itself when I get into these bags. We've had a lot of rain, and uh, when you have rain, the water goes and clogs the holes where snakes and other kind of insects, um, you know, not the best live, and they do come out and they populate our gardens. We just want to make sure that nothing bad happens to anyone in the garden so we can be gardening for as long as possible. I had pulled out the sheep potatoes from this bag the day before, so it is pretty much dried at this point here. It's nothing looking like the way it's supposed to look in terms of sweet potatoes that I have grown before in this exact same way. Something is definitely wrong with these sweet potatoes. Look at the leaves. It's all torn up. Whenever the plant is getting torn up like that, it usually is a sign that the, the plant is just not doing well. Yeah, I'm looking to these sweet potatoes here. See that hole inside it? There's a worm inside eating it. And the plant itself will actually send out stress hormones to say, listen, I'm not doing well. Just come and eat me. Whatever insects you have out there come and just destroy me the plant actually will ask to be put out of its misery um, by sending out stress hormones which insects are able to pick on they hone in on those hormones and then they come and attack these sweet potatoes i've never seen sweet potatoes do so bad before absolutely nothing inside here it's over two months we should at least have a few red beans inside there it's just not a good um, situation at all right here is where i saw a baby snake in this bag you can't see it from there i'm not going to show it on the camera because i know it's it's kind of gross to a lot of people even for me so i just got rid of the snake um just released him on the other side of the fence because i'm also not a fan of the snake and if you look in the bottom right screen there there's just a funny funny slug i know slugs are gross but it's a very funny slug because i just saw him when i was editing the video and it was just really funny to see him fall there he goes oh no Hope he has better luck next time and wish him all the best in his future endeavors. After seeing the snake, I decided to use a fork to continue on and just use more tools rather than put in my hand. Even with the glove, you just never know what could happen. And you can see these tiny, tiny sweet potatoes coming out. Just, it was just the right thing to pull out all these sweet potatoes. This is not, it's just not a good growing situation. And you can't just watch that and let it go and hope it gets better. You, I really have to, um, just sort this situation out it's just it's going to be wasting time if i have sweet potatoes growing like this where the foliage itself is just looking so terrible so beat up just not a good idea at all all right so that was not the sweet potato harvest that we're usually accustomed with seeing here on the training gardener channel uh with good reason you saw how bad the foliage was there so if you have a question about how did i know it wasn't doing so well it's underground just looking at the foliage is how you would know. So that's a good indicator. That's one of the ways in which we listen to our plants. We look at root crops foliage. If the foliage isn't doing good, generally that means that the plant isn't doing good unless it's something like Irish potato where you have to actually wait until the foliage dies until you harvest. Sweet potatoes aren't exactly like that. So sometimes, most of the times, honestly, when the sweet potato leaves still look fairly green, just some yellowing, but for the most part, it looks healthy. Sweet potato generally is still healthy. So. We should always be aware and listen to our plants as much as possible. Just let the plant tell you what's going on. It will tell you if you learn how to listen to the plant. Now, of course, um, the things I'm going to be doing differently because you saw how bad that harvest was. This is going to be the third time that I tried to harvest from this um, piece of area here. So I'm going to be changing areas because this area just isn't working right now. At least it's not working in this season of the year, which is the rainy season. So I'm going to be choosing an area where I get a little bit more direct sunlight. Here is actually underneath a tree, underneath a zabuka tree. So avocado tree, for those of you who don't know what's a zabuka. And the tree itself provides a fair bit of shade. And I was working, I have gotten fair enough harvest from here. But sheep do like to have a bit more sun. 
So I'm going to choose a better location on the other side. And also here, over the years, we have accumulated a bit of dirt and other kind of debris that's here. So I think that would have encouraged things like the snake that, um, well, you didn't see, but that, we, that I encountered. Uh, it'll probably just make for a little bit less pest prone area in the garden. So when I do plant out this soil, because it's getting dark now and I don't have the energy because that was a fair bit of work actually. So when I do plant over, I will probably, if I'm able to bring you all along, so you'll see what is the new area that I'll be planting in. It's in bag. So the terrain itself is not very, very important. The more important part is to make sure that it is getting sufficient sunlight. It's not getting as waterlogged. Well, this wasn't as waterlogged as that, but it still seemed to have a fair bit of moisture because these potatoes were generally like you saw sweet potatoes here, which had like the worm in it. And um, that does happen, but it mostly will happen when you have waterlogged areas on top of a crop that has been in the ground for over four or five months. Sweet potato in general is a three month crop. Commercial farmers will grow sweet potatoes as a three month crop. So you're expecting to plant this month in three months, you're harvesting and you're ready to sell. Now, if you do leave it longer, which I do recommend sometimes if the conditions are right and you leave it for four months, five months, the sweet potatoes can get bigger. But if it's waterlogged, it can have worms in it. Now, what I had today, I had worms, but these sweet potatoes, you saw how small they were. They didn't have um, four or five months on them. They were probably just about two and a half, just under three months. So they're small to begin with, but also they're getting this room. So I think that has to do with probably the location itself. I will be using back the exact same soil. I'm just going to be amending it. I don't think the soil itself is the issue. I will try and see if anything comes back, but I think it has more to do with the location. I stand to be corrected on that. And I do know that when farmers talk about the worm getting into their sweet potatoes, they generally say once that insect is in there, it, there's no way of getting it out and you have to treat the land or plant somewhere else. But I'm going to try because I'm optimistic. I think that the soil itself can recover. I'm going to amend it somewhat with some compost, some cow manure again and see what ends up happening. If I have the same problem, then I'm going to be changing it entirely. But I'm just going to be trying again just to see if the issue was the location itself because I just don't think it was the soil. But I mean, again, you just never know. Well, at least I'm not. 100% sure. Anyways, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video, but more importantly, I hope that you've learned something from this video. I hope it's going to encourage you to get into your garden and really pay attention to what's taking place with your plants and to let your plants tell you what's going on with them and what you can do to assist your plants based on the plant's advice. Remember, if you know somebody who would be interested in growing more healthy organic food for themselves and their family, to feel free to share this video and also share the channel with them to help them to grow more and to be more abundant in their gardens and to have better harvest and to take better care of their plants. Remember, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and on Facebook to see more content coming to the Trinity Gardeners Garden. And remember, you can tag us on any of those platforms because it's such an encouragement, it's such a motivation to see you all spending time in your family and taking your own food security into your own hands. Remember, as always, this has been the Lovely Trinity Gardener channel reminding you to get up and get green. Take care.